Rock and Roll Trucker. This is the Rock and Roll Trucker. We're knocking out miles, we're eating good, we're rocking and rolling and having a good time. Come along for a ride. Let's see where we can go today. Good morning, mid morning. It's about 9.30 a.m. Monday, November 27th. We are past our Thanksgiving break. Last I left you off, I can't even remember what day it was. I just I got sick of everything and took a few days off of videoing. I think I had everybody updated through maybe Tuesday or something. Wednesday, I finally got my little three-day, like, overworked hail trip run there done and got back home Wednesday night. I got home late in the evening, late, well, that's 9.30, pushing 10 o'clock by the time I got home Wednesday, but I was home for Thanksgiving. Then we had all four of the kids there this weekend. And, uh, well, from Thanksgiving through through the weekend, we had various ones of them here and there, but at one point we had all four of them there. And then we took the trip back to Birmingham to take her daughters back, and we got my youngest son delivered back to his mama there, and then my oldest took off back to Cookville, back to college at Tennessee Tech. We had a good, good small, just little me and Aaron and Dash and the kids, little Thanksgiving dinner of our own. Aaron cooked up a killer meal, beautiful turkey, to perfection, I must say. It was lovely, lovely, lovely. Everything was good. We ate, we enjoyed ourselves, we had fun. Had a good few days off. It was nice to have some days off. We got out, uh, we got out Friday and went across town. We just went out walking down by the river and went to the no-bake cookie dough shop. And got some scoops of cookie dough and gorged ourselves and then, you know, just got some exercise in and just watched TV and chilled out and just hung out. Just had a few days off to relax and recoup a little bit. We're back at it today. We're getting ready to head over to Cleveland, Tennessee to pick up some Coca-Cola and we're going to boogie on over to Savannah, Georgia. We're going to dump that off tomorrow morning, run right across town to Pooler, Georgia, and grab Red Bull and go to Milton, Florida for uh, Wednesday. So we got a full couple of days ahead of us here. But we're back. It's been a few days since you saw me on here. I just, I just need to step away for a couple of days. I just need to enjoy the family, enjoy my time off, and just get away from it all. Not anything to do with trucking at all. But here we are again. We're back. We got things to do. We're going to get going. I'll catch back up with y'all in a little while. And I'll tell you about my adventures with uh, our car. I forgot to add that in there. We did have a little adventure with our car and a big repair that had to be done on that. Uh, we had to get the car into the mechanic. Really, 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 really short notice and quick on Friday. Ah, excuse me. On Friday, dropped a bunch of money on that, but it's back. We're in good order. And I'll try and remember to tell that story here in a bit. Y'all hang out. Go do what you got to do. I'll be back with y'all in a little while. See y'all really soon. All right, folks, we're back. We're about to roll out. Let me adjust that a little bit. There we go. Let's pull out of here. We made it to Cleveland, Tennessee. We got loaded up. Our appointment was scheduled for noon. It is now 11.57 a.m. We were done. We got here reasonably early. I was hoping to make up a little bit more time than this, but they were not quite that far ahead today, it would appear. But we're loaded and pulling out three minutes before our scheduled time even was. Most of these uh, Coca-Colas over here around Chattanooga and Cleveland are pretty decent about that. They didn't get me out extraordinarily early, but it got me. It helped out a little bit. It helped out a little bit. So we're moving. We're about to uh, see if we can milk this fuel. We're going to take the back highway out of Cleveland and pop out on 75 down there in Georgia, down there around Dalton, and get ourselves down to the 326 Pilot for some fuel. Pilot has got one of my better prices on my list today with, my, with a, got a good enough discount to uh, make the pilot worth my while today so we're gonna go do that we're back on the road after a few days off didn't want to come back but my pocketbook says you must go back you do not get to quit doing this yet you do not get to, you do not get to quit doing this for a long time especially not after Friday I mentioned to you that we had some uh, 
car excitement over over the break there. Uh, Wednesday, Erin went up to uh, or down to Birmingham to meet up and pick up her daughters. And uh, we ran, right around the time she got back to Chattanooga and pulled into the garage at the apartment, she noticed that the uh, temperature gauge was not reading anything, and she was getting a warning for. Uh, power steering assist reduced and uh, the fan on the car was kicking on full high all the way all the time as long as the car was running and, uh, she sent me a video and it, the, the video you couldn't make out the sound real good and it, it almost sounded like something was going wrong inside the motor but it turned out to be a, a uh, fan going but I had her go down there and you know check the oil and make sure it didn't smell like there was any coolant in it make sure we weren't dripping you know coolant or you know make sure it didn't sound like there was any noise coming from inside the engine and stuff to hoping we didn't blow a head gasket or something and overheat the motor and ruin something in there which it turned out to not be I did my own you know I had her do a bunch of things and check several things for me because I was in the truck and she was at home so I was kind of trying to help out help diagnose this problem from long distance and it got down to the point where I was pretty convinced it was either going to be a temperature, a coolant temperature sensor, or the thermostat. So the car we got, I was sincerely hoping for the coolant temperature sensor. It's not in a great place, but it's not that tough of a job and would have been substantially cheaper. The car we have, we've got a, it's a 2017 Cadillac XT5. It's got the Cadillac slash General Motors 3.6 liter uh, V6 in it. They all, you know, back in the day, a thermostat on any normal vehicle, that was like a $10 part, you know, and a $20, $25 fix by any, you know, southern shade tree mechanic on earth, including myself, you know, I've, I've done it before in the driveway and all. Well, on this particular car, they decided that it's a very fancy thermostat, ties in with all kinds of sensors and everything, and they thought that the best place for it would be on top of the engine, uh, up underneath the upper intake manifold and all of the intake, you know, air intake plumbing and all that stuff. Very, very hard spot to get to, and I didn't have the time or the means or the patience or the experience enough to dig that far off into it. I, I can I can turn a wrench somewhat on some things as long as it's simple stuff. I'm not a mechanic by any means. I'm you know I'm mechanically capable, but I know when something is not going to be worth my while and I'm going to burn a whole entire day doing something that a shop can do in a couple of hours. Well the thermostat itself ended up being uh, several hundred bucks <laughs> you know like I said back in the day $10 part $20 part several hundred dollars and I'm not even going to get into the uh, labor cost involved with it we the only lucky breakthrough all of it was being on a holiday weekend we've got a shop right around the corner from the apartment complex a firestone shop that you know it's a do-it-all mechanic place they reviewed good we checked them out and everything they were actually able to take us in first thing Friday morning and do the do the repair, which was very important to us. We've got that car, my motorcycle, and we've got this truck. We've, we've got, you know, we don't have a lot of need for two cars, so we've just got the one car. So if we have any problems with that car, you know, it can be an issue for us, especially considering we were having to... Uh, transport kids back and forth in a whole bunch of different directions for the holiday and everything too so we had to have that car Saturday we had to have the car Friday night which luckily we got it back in time they got us done in a timely fashion not even close to being cheap or even reasonable in my book but they got it done you know so we had, it was kind of we had to pay for the convenience of having it done on short notice on a Friday more or less yeah. and we got it done, but that was our holiday adventure there, and uh, it's really kind of crazy, modern mechanic shops and everything. You know, back in the day, 
mechanics generally had an idea, you know, experienced mechanics generally had an idea of, yeah, I can do this job, it'll take me roughly so and so, you know, I'll charge you about this much for it. These, like in modern days now, it's like they've got computers, you know, and books telling them how long that they, how many hours that they should charge for these jobs. A lot of these jobs, we all know damn well it doesn't take that many hours to do them. They know it doesn't take that long to do them. But somehow, some way, they always manage to do it in just the right amount of time that the book quoted and charge you for the full price. They always tell you the price and they'll be like, well, it might not take that long. You know, we might be able to get it done quicker than that. No, 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 no. Very rarely do you find them find a shop that will you know unless you know somebody and it's your buddy or something like that that's trying to be you know honest and do you right they always end up charging what the book says there's no real world just this is how long it really takes this is how long it's going to take us to do it this is what the job's worth there's no more of that the computer tells them how long it should take and by god that's how long it takes them so but we got it done, we got it fixed in just enough time to get everybody taken where we needed to get them taken and all that stuff. So we thought we were going to be in a bad spot. And, uh, you know, we're thankful to have the one car. I like the car. It's a nice car. Not a convenient car to get it worked on. That's for sure. And we're, we were very thankful to have that one. But it, it can be, and that's really one of the first times it's ever been an inconvenience for us that having only one car you know is has been a problem we've always been able to figure it out and make everything else work since we scaled down to one car we did have two but we scaled down and got you know got us one nicer one and got my motorbike and everything and uh hadn't been a problem up until that point but so it all ended up uh it, it was slightly financially damaging to me considering i was just now really starting to catch up with everything financially you know with running this truck and business and everything and uh that uh that did hurt a bit <laughs> it was it was a very inopportune time for that to come around but i did thankfully i did have the money it's just you know gonna put me behind in a lot of areas I'm gonna some of the uh progress i was making you know we're kind of set back another it's set back a couple of weeks again but it's all right we got it done we got it taken care of we were fortunate enough to be able to take it care of without you know having to be in emergency mode to try and borrow money or anything like that so but that's you know so for our thanksgiving we were thankful of that we got everything taken care of but that was our little mishap and adventure you know over the over the break there but i've about warmed my voice out telling that story so i'm going to take a break we're going to try and get on across to our fuel stop and get out to the interstate without running out of fuel you know I'll, as always, I'll catch back up with y'all here in a little while. Y'all go eat lunch or dinner or something. I, I'll see y'all here in a bit. Bye-bye for a little while. Hello, people. Man, I am on I-16. Finally got past Macon, which means I got past Atlanta, but that was no fun. Man, I hit it before. It was really getting off work time, and I just hit the Atlanta. It didn't matter. I hit the Atlanta brick wall. It was garbage all the way down to about McDonough, Georgia, and then it stayed garbage there for a while. It cleared up, sort of, but never got to full travel speed for very long. And then we started getting to uh, close to I-16, and there's signs for detours. There's accident going. There's construction going. So I had to detour around part of you know, go through and around part of Macon and pop back out on 16. And uh, we have finally hit open road. It took long enough. I have the worst luck in Georgia. Anything within about 100 miles of Atlanta, blah. Atlanta ruins my day. If I think about Atlanta, it ruins my day. <laughs> it is, that, that, that area has not been my friend ever in my entire history of truck driving since I started driving way back in 05. I have never, never enjoyed Atlanta. Never had good luck there. I don't know, has anybody ever had good luck in Atlanta as a truck driver? I don't know. There's some people that live down there that swear that's the greatest place on earth to be, and I don't understand it. 
I'm sure there's some merit to the place inside the perimeter of the city. Maybe so. But you have to get through all the crap to get there, and I'm not interested. There's so many concerts I'd like to go to that are in Atlanta that I'm like, nope, I'll just go catch it somewhere else or I won't go at all. I got a few coming up this next year. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I think I'll just rather drive further and go to Nashville and pay extra for parking. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's a, me, and, me and that city just don't get along well. But, oh, we finally, finally hit some open road here on I-16. We're trying to get to Savannah for tomorrow morning. We got a live unload in the morning and then we've got a pickup just in another part of Savannah over in the Pooler area. We'll be picking up Red Bull and uh, most of our loads there are dropping hook. But this one's listed as a 10 a.m. early, 10 a.m. late and I'll be there before 10 a.m. And usually all of ours turn into dropping hook we keep trailers there, and usually we're not in position where we can make the live load times. But this time I'm going to be able to be there, and I'm afraid it's not already going to be preloaded. I've since I took on since I started with BWI, I've only had to live load there one time, and it was an hour's ordeal. So I'm not really looking forward to the possibilities of that being a live load and losing a bunch of time to it. Because I've got to get there, i got to get from there to Milton, Florida by Wednesday morning. And that's a, it's going to be a near 500 mile drive there, so I don't need to lose any more time than necessary. I need tomorrow to go in an orderly fashion. And that includes getting as close as I can to where we're going finding a parking space so we don't burn too much time in the morning getting the clock started too soon. Not sure how I'm going to handle that. I might actually go on over to the neighborhood of the the uh, Red Bull pickup because that industrial park over there, there's lots of places where you can kind of get off the side of the road on the little side streets and stuff where there's other warehouses and all. And there's a nice little parking spot I used once over by a big, it's like a retention pond but it's massive. It's more like a lake. And it's nice and peaceful, nice and quiet. Got some water to look at. Nobody really bothers you. There's nobody to bother you there. Minimal traffic going up and down the road because it's kind of a dead end. And uh, that might be an option. That's only, ah, uh, that's like seven to ten miles down the road from where we've got to be for the early morning drop off. So we may stay around that area and just, you know, go do the drop off and then backtrack back. I don't. It's a it's a whole big gamble doing it no matter what. But it is a, it got chilly today. It's only it's gotten a little warmer as I've headed this direction. It was really cold at home this morning before I left. Before I went to pick up the truck and get going. Uh, it's a little cool out there, but man, the sky is gorgeous. You can see that beautiful sunset starting to form out front, nice and gold. Got that golden hue to the sky out in front of us. Blue sky, nice wispy white clouds up there. So traffic aside, it's been a decent day to drive. It's been gorgeous out here, and it's that nice, it's that nice, full-blown, real deal, like, chilly fall weather. I love it. I don't like being cold, but I'll put up with it for gorgeous weather like this, you know? There's just something that I've always, it just makes me, this, this time of the year always makes me feel good. It's, it's my favorite part of the year to drive when I have to go trucking. You know, I don't know if any part of any time is my favorite to drive anymore with how insane it is out here anymore, but this part of the year has always been my favorite. You get past all the hot weather, it's not quite to that freezing, freezing cold weather. It's, it's, it gets gorgeous and chilly. It's like, you know, like hooded sweatshirt weather, you know, just, I love it. I love it. You get those, you get some nights where you don't got it mess with running the air conditioner or the heater on the truck. You can just kind of crack the little windows or vents and sleep, you know, just just very pleasant. I love it. Yeah, we're on I-16. We're headed to Savannah. we got to figure out where we're going to go. We're about 145 miles out right now. And, you know, got some things to juggle, some things to figure out. And I'm going to get off here and figure those things out and do some more driving. And uh, I'll probably wait till I'm stopped to uh, catch back up with you guys again because 
it'll be dark in a little while. It's getting that time of the evening. The sun's rapidly going down, and uh, not much sense in doing video clips if you can't see me. Some of y'all might like it better that way, and I wouldn't blame you. Just listening to me and not having to see this mug, but I'm not going to give you that satisfaction, you know. So I'll be back in a little while, you know, a little later once we get stuck. It'll be good until then. I'll see you again here in a little while. Well, folks, here we are. We made it somewhere. We, uh, it got dark on us and everything, and we kept on trucking along, and, uh, I started getting re within spitting distance of everywhere, and, uh, started hunting a park in space, and we started hunting at the newish, newer, newish to I-16. There's a TA Express somewhere back around, is it Statesboro, something like that. They had a lot of parking, but about 80 to 90 percent of it was paid parking, and all the free spaces were full. I wasn't in a, enough of a time crunch or desperate for a spot to uh, pay for one there. Ran across the street to a shell station. They had old, you know, raggedy dirt lot and had a sign up that said $15 parking. Not paying 15 bucks for a uh, dirt parking spot when I'm not in a pinch for even needing the parking spot yet. I was like, I got a couple more spots I can try. There's a Love's coming up pretty close to Savannah. Then I've got a Walmart and Pooler that allows truck parking somewhat and there's my little hidden gym by the retention lake over in the industrial park by my pickup tomorrow I was like but we'll get down there and try this loves i can't remember what exit it in or what it is or what this town is but it's about now we're about 20 20 miles 20 minutes 25 minutes outside of where we got to make our delivery in the morning in savannah it's usually pretty busy didn't expect anything i thought that close to savannah this place would be just not a chance. Got in here and there was six or seven empty spaces. So I squeezed in one and win, win, win. I like that. We got us a restroom. We got us some coffee in the morning. We're good to go. Can't beat that. I didn't expect there to be anything. I was prepared to go on up and check the Walmart and if nothing there, going down to my little industrial park spot. But yeah, we're here. Went inside, got me a sweet treat to go with my leftover pizza I brought. We got a Buffalo Soldier Pizza from uh, Southside Pizza in Chattanooga. Right around, it's our little neighborhood pizza shop that I'm just thrilled to death to live near. I love their sandwiches, I love their pizza, I love everything about their vibe. The employees are always friendly, their stuff is always good. They're no kind of a sponsor of mine, but they're an awesome spot, so I give them a shout out. If you're ever in Chattanooga, check out Southside Pizza out on Main Street, right downtown, or holler at me, I'll go with you. I love it over there. Uh-huh. But yeah, we're about to eat us a little something. Holler at the lady. Chat back and forth a little bit and watch some TV. Maybe get a little exercise in and do some various things here. We're just going to chill for a bit. We got stopped in time enough to where we got a little extra time. A little above our 10-hour uh, break. We got we got a little excess time. So we'll chill out and hang out. How was y'all's Thanksgiving? Happy late Thanksgiving. I didn't do any videos over Thanksgiving. I had one from on my way home telling my saga and everything for the Tuesday and Wednesday you know getting home and everything and by the time I got home just didn't feel like finishing it I just wanted to take a few days off and relax and not have to worry about anything and we had the car issues and all but not doing a video is just one thing off my plate I didn't forget about y'all I just needed some breathing time yeah so but you'll be seeing this and uh I'm back. I didn't go anywhere. Fear not. Some of y'all were excited, hoping I was gone. I'm not. So kiss my butt if you're one of those. I'm just playing. There's probably only four or five hundred of you that want me gone, I fear. There's probably more of you that want me gone that would rather not see me show up in their YouTube feed as there was uh, to see me, but I don't care. I'm going to keep on doing my videos anyways and keep trying to get this channel monetized. I'm inching closer and closer and closer. Not quite there yet. I'm well past the subscriber amount. Just hadn't hit the watched hour time yet. So if y'all ever get bored on here, if, even if you don't feel like watching another one of me, if you got an extra device laying around or something, go pull up my channel and hit the day in the life of a trucker on my channel and hit play on an extra device or something. And just turn the volume down and set it in the background. Run me some hours up on there. I'd appreciate it. It would help me a lot here later on down the road. Yeah. I don't have a whole lot more to say than that. Yeah, Tell me how your Thanksgiving was. I hope it was great. 
I didn't literally, I, I listen to podcasts all day long, so I don't got any music to talk about right now. We'll get back on that tomorrow for sure. But, uh, tell me what you did. Tell me how your break was. If you had any time off, if, if you got with family, if you were home alone, tell me about it. If, if you were, you know, I'd like to hear about it. Let's chat about it. I want to know your experiences just as much as I want to tell you mine. But for now, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to edit this up, get this posted for for in the morning, uh, get it all scheduled up and all. And I'm going to chill out and hang out for a bit. Whatever time it is, where you are, have a good morning or a good night, good afternoon. Whatever it is, have a good one. And, uh, you know, whatever you're doing, spread positive energy and goodwill to your fellow people out there. Let's try and make this world a better place and be good to our fellow fellow humans and fellow neighbors. And good vibes all the time if we can, even on our bad days. For now, and with that, I'm going to say bye-bye and good night, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Y'all be good till then.